There was this young boy in my neighborhood who was different from the rest of the kids in the neighborhood, you know those type. The loners, the ones who always stay to themselves. They're not psychotic, demonic, or anything like that. Just not quite like the rest of the kids in the neighborhood. They dress and look different and act different. I carry themselves in a different way, and for what I can tell, they think different from the rest. This made it easy for the, you know, beautiful people of the world to mess with him, bully him, you may call it, a lot. So one day I asked him why you let the bully you like that, and he said he'd been bullied all his life as a young kid till now. It used to bother me, he said, growing up. But as I've gotten older, not so much. Now, I just look at the source and think, screw him, they'll be dead soon. I guess he's never been to Lucky with the ladies either. So after years of failed relationships, he found himself alone, friendless, and living in a 20-year-old trailer that he's renting from a friend of a friend of a friend. It doesn't really matter who. Anyway, he said he thought to himself, I'm tired of being alone. I can probably get another girlfriend, but she just get on my nerves, and we break up. Same old song and dance. No, this time, I want a companion. Someone who is happy to see me when I come home from work. Someone who likes to go for walks. Someone to ride shotgun in the car. Someone who will love me for who I am, not for what I have to offer them. I'm gonna get a dog. The very next day, he said he got up, hopped in his car, and drove to the local ASPCA to get himself a dog. He walked in, told the lady behind the desk when he was looking for nothing big, a small dog, a lap dog so to speak. She said, sure, right this way. He said she took him into the kennel area and showed him many types of little dogs, mini pinchers, chihuahuas, even a few Pomeranians, etc. They were all lovely dogs, but none of them really seemed to click with him. Then out of the corner of his eye, at the very end of the cages all by itself, sat a metal box. The box was fully enclosed with a tiny barred window in the door, resembling a prison cell. He said to the lady, what is that? She looked at him as if he wasn't supposed to ask and said, that's Roscoe. We're not really sure what kind of dog he is. He's been returned to us several times due to behavioral issues. He's scheduled to be put down later today. That's why he's in the box. I'd like to see him, he said. She said, I don't think that's a good idea. Starting to get annoyed, he said, the sign out front says all dogs ready for adoption. He's in here. He can be adopted. Now I want to see him, he demanded. She said, yes, sir, with a you're going to regret it tone, and took me over to the box, unlocked the door, opened it, and then he saw him. This little guy looked rough. His brown fur was matted to his body, crusty pieces of, he said he don't know what in the corners of his eyes like he'd been crying. His nails were a bit long and sharp. His eyes were jet black with the slightest hint of red in them. To be quite honest, he looked like he just crawled out of the sewer and smelled like it too. He had an odor that reminded him of the summers he spent helping his uncle at his funeral home. He smelled like death, but he was friendly. He said the little dog ran out of the box, ran up to him, let him pick him up and licked his face for what had to been at least 10 minutes. He was wagging his tail and just going crazy with excitement and so was he. He told the lady, this little guy ain't dying today, Roscoe has a new home. A look of worry fell over her face. After filling out some paperwork and getting his dog license, he took Roscoe home. First on the agenda was a bath. He was rather calm in the bath, seemed to enjoy it really. After that he dried him off and brushed him out. He said he had to use one of his old brushes, since he didn't have a dog brush. He said they went to the local pet store next. He told me he won't mention the name of the place, due to legal matters. He'll just say the people there are smart about pets. We got all the necessities needed to take care of his new friend. The drive home started out normal, just driving down the road. He said he always been a conscious driver, always doing the speed limit or below. Apparently the guy in the car behind him didn't like it and sped up to pass him, everyone usually does. He pulled alongside of him and yelled, get the hell out of the way moron, learn how to drive. Roscoe went crazy, barking and jumping up on the dash as the guy passed, growling, showing all his teeth, drooling and clawing the dash. 
the red tint on his eyes was becoming even more apparent now. He began banging his head against the windshield in a crazed attempt to get at the guy, hitting it so hard it split his forehead open. Blood running down his face, on the windshield and dash, oh my god, what the hell is happening? Roscoe, calm down, stop, Roscoe, stop. He said he finally had to pull on the side of the road. Roscoe's still frantic. He said he'd throw an old shirt over him so he couldn't see. Grabbed him, telling him it's okay, over and over again. His body went limp. He thought he was dead. He pulled the shirt from over him, and the second he did, his eyes opened, and he was wide-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to play. Like nothing ever happened. What the hell? He said he took the shirt and held it over the dog's forehead, stopping the blood. He washed him up fully when they got home, cleaning the dash and windshield as well. They spent the rest of the day playing in the yard and hanging around the house so he could get used to his new home. The trailer park they live in isn't the best of places to live. The lot rent is cheap, but that's the only good thing about it. It's a dirt road, in a U-shape with trailers running parallel with the road on both sides. This is apparently where the term, trailer trash, came from. It's not that the people are bad or anything, it's just cleanliness isn't their way of life. Old refrigerators, car parts, and various other piles of junk clutter their yards. The trailer at the end, in front of the park, has been raided a couple times by local police, and there is always cars pulling in and out of there. I think they're selling drugs, but that's none of his business, he said. In the middle of the park is what the park manager calls a playground. It consists an old beat-up swing set, a rickety metal slide, and a sandbox that most of the cats around here use as a litter box. Most of the older folks here just sit out there and talk all day. No kids ever play there. Who can blame them? It's a lawsuit waiting to happen. He said the night he realized Roscoe was the perfect friend for him came about two months later. That night, while taking him for a walk around the park before going to bed, we passed the old playground. Something told him not to cut through there, just complete the circle around the park and go home. But it was close to his house and he was really tired. At the playground, there were two guys he'd never seen before, in black hoodies, just hanging out. One on the swing, the other on the slide. He said as he passed them, he overheard the guy on the swing say, Nice dog. Can I pet him? He said, sure. As the one guy bent down to pet Roscoe, he heard the cocking of a gun and felt the barrel press hard against the back of his neck. Give me your freaking money or you're dead, the guy from the slide, who now had a gun said. The other guy leaped up and grabbed him and slammed him against the slide, grabbing the leash in the process. What happened next? Sent shivers down his spine, he said, and filled him with excitement at the same time. Roscoe went insane, his eyes turned bright red, skipping the growling and clawing part and went straight for the guy's neck. He leaped up from a sitting position and grabbed the guy's throat, digging his claws into the side of his neck and ripping out his voice box with his teeth, blood spewing everywhere as the guy fell to the ground. Roscoe was still attached, but the guy with the gun ran like a little bitch. The guy on the ground was gasping for air, blood pouring out of his mouth and a hole in his throat as he choked on it. He tried to hit Roscoe to get him off. But the dog was relentless, he said, biting and clawing at the guy's face, ripping and tearing his eyes out, part of his cheek and his entire nose, down to the socket. Maybe he's wrong for this, he said, but he don't care. After years of being messed with by assholes like this, it was great to finally get revenge. I started chanting Roscoe on. Get him, boy. Get him. Kill that piece of shit. Eat, boy, eat. And that's just what he did. As the guy took his last breath, Roscoe stepped back and fell over, his body limp and lifeless, blood covering his snout, with pieces of flesh and eyeballs hanging from his mouth. Two seconds later, he sprung back to life, happy and energetic, chewing on the eyeball pieces like a play toy. Good boy, Roscoe. He said he told his dog, as I picked him up, staring at the mutilated corpse that lay at his feet and smiled. Screw that piece of shit. Let the cats eat the rest, he said. So he carried Roscoe home, washed him off, and fed him the biggest steak he had. Raw, of course, just how he likes it. He said he had the best night's sleep that he's ever had that night.
Bosco right by my side. Homicide detectives and police flooded the park the day after, going door to door looking for witnesses as to what happened. Mrs. Jacobson, from three trailers down, found the body. She had to be given oxygen and a ride in the ambulance to get checked out. It traumatized her so bad. I'm sorry, Mrs. Jacobson, she said. I really am. When the cops came to his door, he, of course, saw nothing. And Roscoe was on his best behavior, laying on the living room floor pretending to be asleep. He watched the coroner carry the body away. The cops finished up and went away. He asked his neighbor what happened, and she said, Some guy was mauled to death last night. The cops think it was some kind of wild animal that escaped from the circus that came through about a year ago and attacked the guy. There have been numerous bodies found in the area with wounds such as the ones they found today. They're writing it off as that. Roscoe and him couldn't be happier together. He has a loving home and him in some sort of sick, twisted way get to seek revenge on anyone willing to harm or do wrong. Let this be a warning to you. And also, if any of you assholes from my past are reading this, I haven't forgotten. I will find you. I will get you. Well, Roscoe will. Consider this not a threat, but a promise. P.S. Roscoe is not a bad dog. He's just very protective. Good boy, Roscoe.